Every year, AAA says about 100 children nationwide are killed walking to and from school, with 25,000 getting hurt. And the FM area is no exception. But AAA's school safety patrol program tries to help the problem, giving kids the opportunity to be leaders by helping their fellow classmates at the crosswalks and getting on and off the bus. But as Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley found, few local schools are part of that program. As distracted drivers continue to be a concern for kids getting on and off the bus, some schools in North Dakota have adopted AAA's safety patrol program. So you're looking for anything that may be unsafe for the students on that bus. Sometimes it might be just stopping a student before they jump off the bus because you see a car coming along the side of the, of the bus, something like that. Patrollers are usually fifth graders and can also be stationed at crosswalks, holding back their peers until the coast is clear. They do not control traffic, they control the kids. So it's basically a way for these students to act as in a leadership role with their fellow students. Lisbon Public Schools is one of the program's participants, giving their students several leadership roles to fall into. They've adopted the program to assist with you know, bus drop-off zones, uh, parent drop-off zones, in their hallways and in their playgrounds, um, all the roles that the safety patroller can take on. But out of 33,000 schools that are part of this project, North Dakota only has eight. Six of those schools in Grand Forks with the others in Lisbon and Belfield. Oh, I think it's an awesome program that I wish more schools would embrace, you know. Fargo Public Schools says they were approached by AAA in 2015, but did not adopt the program. And they tell me it's unclear if they ever would, saying they haven't had any discussions about it. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. While Moorhead Public Schools is not part of AAA's safety patrol program, they say they do have something similar in several of their elementary schools with 4th and 5th graders posted at crosswalks around the school to help their classmates safely get to the other side. School lunch debt in Fargo ballooned to $26,000 this year. And to help erase some of that debt, local musicians are throwing a benefit show. It's called Lunch Aid, Fargo Bands for School Kids. More than a dozen bands have signed up for the family-friendly event, including the Moody River Band, D. Mills and the Thrills, and DJ AP. There's a suggested donation of $10 with a goal of raising about $26,000 and the awareness of the needs of everyday families in the community. That concert is scheduled for September 15th from 4 to 7 p.m. It'll be held at the Sanctuary Events Center in downtown Fargo. The weekend is here and it sure would be nice to hear that the forecast is calling for nice weather so we can all get out and enjoy the outdoors. That is a big setup, Hutch, so let's find out if you can deliver in your no wait weather planner. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you set the standard pretty high there. Well, uh, tonight looks absolutely outstanding. We have quiet conditions across the region as we look in on the Fargo Dome. 83 in Grand Forks, the high for the day so far. 86 in Minot, a sizzler, upper 70s across Lakes Country in northwest Minnesota. We're quiet this evening. A few thunder showers in eastern Minnesota. Other than that, the Friday night outlook looks substantially pleasant. It looks like we'll dip into the 60s on a clear and quiet Friday night in both Grand Forks and Fargo by the time we get to bedtime. Now to set up the rest of the weekend, Andrea, we do have a few hitches in the old giddy up thunderstorms and a few could be strong to severe. I'll have details on that in your hour by hour forecast here in just a minute. All right. Thanks. Hedge. Yeah. A Fargo man is trying to track down his stolen Harley. Rhett Hallberg says it sat right next to his roommate's bike in their garage. The Harley means a lot to Hallberg. He tells us he saved up for a long time to get the bike. And what really has him scratching his head is how he believes it was stolen. See, if they bent this in and snuck their hand up, grabbed the lever. So this is the only thing I own that has my name on it, so it is really special to me. Hallberg adds that his garage was closed. The keys were for the Harley were in his apartment. Police tell us, unfortunately, these things st still happen, even when you take all the right steps. They're urging you to always be a good neighbor, keep your garage closed at night, and look out for suspicious activity. We have an update to the scary situation that happened at the Dilworth Walmart last week. Last Thursday, officers say a woman called them, saying there was an armed man inside the store. Police say they have identified what the caller looks like based on surveillance videos. The prank call prompted the evacuation of the store. Police have not been able to make contact with that woman. If you have any information, contact Dilworth Police. 
A 58-year-old man is in custody and charged with assault after police say he refused to come out of his home after a possible argument. The incident happened last Thursday evening in Ada, Minnesota. The initial report was for a disagreement possibly involving firearms. When police did arrive, the homeowner, Samuel Bernstein, wouldn't come out. Eventually, he did and was taken into custody. It's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 39-year-old Jessica Trottier is wanted for possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver, tampering with evidence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on her. Trying to make a green light can lead to gridlock. It's a problem Fargo police say happens too often. They say not only is it blocking the box awkward when others' drivers are waiting for you to move, it's also illegal. A warning for drivers, secure your load or be prepared to lose it and then face some fines. The Minnesota State Patrol put the warning out today as parents are beginning to pack their trucks to help send their kids off to college. And if you happen to be behind one of these vehicles, troopers say to give them plenty of room just in case. Keeping your kids safe from child predators is important and it's a scary topic for parents. Fargo police say one of the most important safety tips is setting online boundaries for kids and making sure they follow them. What's okay and what's not okay, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and put those limitations and make sure, making sure that we're monitoring what our children are doing and being in the room when they're on any sort of computer, laptop, iPad, and things like that. Uh, because groomers are looking for a situation, they're looking for vulnerable children, teenagers, where they can create those relationships. For more on this story, go to our website. It's on valleynewslive.com. There's a new way to protect children with autism in case of an emergency, and it started right here. It is a free online program called Safety Jacket. When parents register their children's information online, it gives first responders the information they need to help the child with autism in a crisis situation. For example, their preferred methods of communication and routines. The program partners with local agencies like the Cass and Clay County Sheriff's Office, offices and Fargo, West Fargo and Moorhead Police. Some local high school football teams already have earned victories. Their season hasn't even started yet. That's because Stanley Public Schools in western North Dakota announced that it doesn't have enough players to fill a varsity football team. Therefore, Stanley will have to forfeit all of its 2019 varsity games. The school district does say it will compete as a junior varsity team instead. Grand Forks Public Schools now has an extra $15,000 to help Native American students. The money comes from a grant and will help the students buy reduced price bus tickets, as well as cover fees for after school care, college applications, and tests. Moorhead Public Schools once again participating in the diversity job fair. The district says it works to recruit diverse candidates to meet students' needs. About a quarter of the school district's student population are minorities, while 95% of the staff are white. The diversity job fair is September 18th at the Moorhead Center Mall. If you have old cell phones lying around, you have a chance to get rid of them and help the community at the same time. The Lakes Crisis and Resource Center is looking for old cell phones. The center will send your phone off to have your data safely erased, and then it will be given to local families escaping violence. A little boy is setting up shop to help the Clay County Sheriff's Office. You might be seeing a lemonade stand at the Sabin Street Fair tomorrow. This 11-year-old boy says he wants to donate some of his proceeds to help the sheriff's office get a second canine officer. His stand will be on the Old 52 near the church.